Oh, whoop. That ran a little long. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, yeah. I'm, I'm back. I'm back. <clears throat> what was I? Oh, yeah. Just want to check a thing, check a thing. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. What was I? Oh yeah. Sorry. This happens. This happens. Um, so yeah, we're going to start a short story. Uh, the, the short story project, uh, we're going to be doing today. Uh, right now, in fact. Uh, so I wanted to talk a lot about my thought process as to how I was approaching this, this short story and how uh, the idea came about and, and a few other things. Uh, so, uh, to start off with, uh, I didn't have one when I started this dream or when I started uh, the show. Uh, I knew I wanted to do one. I didn't know what I was going to do yet. I also knew that I was going to be on theory for a couple weeks. so. Uh, there was going to be at least two weeks, maybe more, uh, before I had to come up with an idea uh, that I wanted to do. Because uh, I, I didn't want to do something I was previously working on uh, at all, like in, in any way, shape, or form, uh, simply because it would be much harder for me to describe my thought process on something that I've already thought through uh, than it would be to actually show you the thinking as it goes. Um, I realize it doesn't make a ton of sense, but I just feel like it's easier to present something, uh, step by step to, to an audience than it is to present something like, Hey, here, here's something, uh, and here's how I got there in like an hour, but not show you the little, the, 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 the decisions and little things that I had to make, uh, that you almost don't even remember making in order to get there. Uh, so yeah, um, last week, uh, on the show, uh, I challenged my friend Drani to a, uh, an art off, as it were, um, where she would use writing prompts to draw a writing thing, uh, to draw, sorry, she would use writing prompts to, to draw something, and I would use art prompts to write something. Uh, and I was going to do that during the week and I was thinking about it and, uh, I was like, no, nah, you know what, you know what, I'm going to do this on stream. And when I do it on stream, uh, it's, it's going to be the short story, uh, that I want to do. Um, rather than, rather than just, just an exercise, uh, for, for two reasons. One. Uh, cause I don't have a lot of time this week. Uh, so I really, I wouldn't have been able to, to write outside of the, the samples and stuff I had to do, uh, <laughs> at, like at all. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to do it either way. And, and B, uh, I had been thinking about it and there was enough, there was enough of, of that funny idea tickle of a seed of a premise that, I feel like it, it, it's something bigger than just, just an exercise. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to work on it. I'm going to develop it. Uh, so, um, first things first. Oh, shit, where'd it go? I had a thing. All right, I have to make a, I have to make a screenshot real quick. I'll only take a second. Because I have awesome tools ready to go. Let's go. Boom. All right. Cool. Sounds good. Got it. We, we got there. We got there. 
So, let's go to the main screen. Oh, there we are. Cool. So, I made a little table here. This table's in the show notes. Uh, but this is... Uh... This is, uh, right, I get, um, I'm missing a step here, sorry. So, when I agreed to do this, these art prompts, I went to the site, uh, artprompts.com, which I'm going to open up here, because I... Oh, nope, that's not the right place. Artprompts.org. Sorry. Uh, so this is where I went. Uh, it's a pretty neat place. Uh, they've got a lot of cool articles about writing and or not about writing, about art, uh, but they apply to writing and uh, some cool things about online art communities and stuff. Uh, so yeah, but there's uh, there's actually five generators here, and I was like, well, which one do I pick? Uh, like. Do I just pick one and do it? Like, I don't know. So anyway, I clicked on one and I was like, uh, what's this one? Her long gray hair was tied back with a small strip of red ribbon. Interesting. So yeah, uh, I, I I went through one and I was like, uh, I don't know. Like, I could write a story out of this, but it, but it's a little small. It's a little it's a little too tiny seed. So I was like, well, you know what? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna do all five categories. So so I clicked open and generated five things. And I was like, well, I need some options, so I'll, I'll generate two more, so I have kind of three choices of of which one I want to do. So I did that, and uh, that's what you see here. This is this is the result of my generation each thread being a different set of five of uh, the five things from art prompts. Uh, so that's what I have. And then I was like, during the week when I, when I was having, like I didn't have time to write on the exercise and all that and I was thinking about it, I was like, you know what? I see, I see links. I see links here. So I'm actually gonna make this one piece with three separate narratives that link together. <laughs> so I, I saw these links and I was like, yeah, you know what? This is this is one one story mixed together. Um and, and I'll expand more on threads and, and the way that I think it'll be constructed next week, or not next week, next episode. Uh, when I do outlining. I'm not gonna get into that too too much today. Uh maybe a little bit when I get to synopsis and stuff. Uh, but right now, uh, we're going to focus on, uh, brainstorming mind mapping. Um, but before I get to that, I'm just going to do a real quick thing right here. Um, cause when I was looking through this, I realized that not everyone was going to know, um, not everyone's going to know all of the fancy creatures and concepts and stuff that, that we're talking about. Uh, so I, I wanted to kind of just give a brief, quick overview of, uh, of a couple of creatures that they mention in here, just to, just just for funsies, uh, and and you know, just to, to, uh, there's a few interesting details which I think will come back up later, uh, which are important to note. Um, so the first one you'll see here is uh, in the characters is the siren. Um, so a siren here, and I'll be clicking on the pictures because Greek, Greek paintings, or paintings about Greek mythology, man. Not safe for Twitch. Um, so the sirens, specifically from Greek mythology, uh, are, are beautiful, dangerous creatures who lure, uh, who lure sailors uh, to shipwreck using their, their enchanting voices. Um, and, uh, they tend to be part bird, uh, which is an important detail to note because it's going to come up a little bit later. 
Um, so yeah, that's a siren. Uh, they're, they're a creature from Greek mythology. They're pretty neat. Uh, they play a lot. Uh, there's a really cool scene in the Odyssey where, uh, where uh, Odysseus uh, straps himself to the mast of his ship so he can hear the song, but he can't actually go to them and die. Uh, really, really cool. Um, but yeah, so that's a siren. Uh, if I go back to my thing here. So the next one... Uh, and this is probably a little too obvious, but I'm just going to go over it anyway, because I went over all the rest of them. But, goblins. What is, it, what is a goblin? Um, so they're like a little a little daemon or a monster. Uh, they tend to be short, they tend to be greedy. Uh, they tend to have magical abilities, but that's not always true. There's conflicting stories from different, um, different uh, countries countries of origin um they're they're especially prevalent from the middle ages uh but they've they've rapidly infiltrated our idea of of, of fantasy in today uh by today's standards uh there's tons of goblins in lord of the rings uh there's lots of in warcraft um a bunch of other stuff goblins everywhere um lots and lots of goblins um, so yeah, uh, goblins. And I, lo I love this picture, by the way. I think it's really, really cool. Uh, I don't know who it's by, though. Interesting. Uh, Francisco Goya. Where do I know that name? Hmm, no idea. Anyway, seems like a decent painter. <laughs> Interesting. Let's go back to my goblins there. Um, so yeah, that's that's goblins. Keep in mind that that these are just like the general ideas of them. Their interpretation of them is up to us, right? Like that's what we we can interpret those things. Saturn devouring his children. Um, do we know that painting? Link it to me later, Sam. I'll take a look. I probably do, but I, I can't remember it off the top of my head, and I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna just look for it now. I'm, I'm on a roll, like a roll. Um, and, and and speaking of interpretation, that's where this next one comes in. So, um, I'll go back. Sleeping fawn. Now, the way that this is spelled is uh, with a W. Which actually means that it's talking about a baby deer. Uh, but I actually misread it the first couple times I saw it. Because uh, I wasn't paying attention. And uh, interpreted it as the other type of fawn. Which is actually what I'm going to use. Because I think it's more interesting for the story. Uh, so, sorry. It's not going to be a baby deer. Uh, <laughs> this is a fawn. Now, interestingly enough... Um, a uh, fawn uh, is often is often misrepresented by a satyr. Um, so, in a lot of interpretations, they get them confused, and it's really weird and interesting. Uh, fawns are actually from Roman mythology and not Greek mythology. Uh, they're half human, half goat. Uh, human from the waist up, except for their their horns. Uh, goat from the waist down. Uh, whereas satyrs are actually supposed to be part horse and not goats at all. Though a lot of people interpret them as goats and it's weird. Um, but yeah, they're supposed to be horses. Um, so that's kind of the difference between the two. Uh, the most notable use of, of the fawn being uh, uh, in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, like he's an actual fawn. Uh, not a satyr. So yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and, and Pan's Labyrinth, right? Um, Pan in Pan's Labyrinth is a fawn. Um, and, and Sam in the chat is correct. Satyrs are just horses uh, for their genitalia. Uh, that's totally true. Uh, because they are followers of Dionysus, 
the um, the god of of blood, semen, and wine. Uh, so yeah, phallic references everywhere. Totally. There's there's a few different types of of Greek mythological races that actually are part of that uh, that sort of troop, as it were. Um, so yeah, uh, interesting, interesting stuff. But I'm using I'm using this fawn, not uh, not the baby deer, because I think it's cooler. Uh, and I and I don't get to play around with these sort of like Greek mythology sort of style things, especially with the sirens. Um, and that's kind of why I thought it was it was a different type of fawn because I was reading sirens, and sirens are all about Greek mythology. So I was like, oh, obviously, obviously, but I was just making connections, no, regardless of spelling. Uh, so, so yeah. Um, cool. So that that's just a couple of things to note as as we talk about uh, talk about uh, I, I, as we as we talk about the my thought process through the idea. Um, yeah. Um, right. So, uh, as part of the process of what I'm doing today, because I wanted to show mind maps and I wanted to show, uh, making connections, I don't tend to do mind maps on a regular basis. They can be very, very useful if you're, if you're making some connections, but you need to see a visual representation of those connections, uh, between concepts and your idea. Uh, I mean, that's, that's literally what mind maps are for. They're, they're a type of diagram to organize visual information. What you see behind me on my wall there, um, which I'm basically going to recreate on screen for you, uh, is, is, is a very simplified version of a mind map with a central idea and branching ideas out of it. Um, mind maps are an important part of brainstorming, uh, you know, to, to develop uh, a seed into something bigger where you can use your seed as your, as your main concept and you can build off things around it. Uh, so yeah, um, mind maps, cool thing to do. I do them, I do them on a, on a semi-regular basis, uh, when I really need to do visualization. I don't always need it. Often I can, um, often I can just work through it in my head. And, and it goes into the synopsis, but not all the time. And uh, I wanted to show kind of a way that can, I wanted to show not just the way that I always do things, but also the way that you can do things. So I, I'm gonna show my maps because I think it's cool. And I, and I, and I kind of wanted it for this idea. Um, so yeah, and, and I'm, I'm doing the whole movie magic thing. Uh, where, where I have one pre-prepped. I uh, hope this is big enough. Uh, I know my writing software and all that's pretty, pretty readable, but I don't know about this. I'm gonna close this here. Is this readable at all? Please let me know, chat. So I split up my, um, my three generated seeds into, into three sort of sections. Because uh, these are kind of going to be the, the the three main ways in which uh, the three main um, uh, narrative threads, as it were, uh, th through the story, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start uh, doing the whole connecting thing of, uh, of brainstorming. And, I, and I've thought through a, a bunch of them. Uh, I'll show you, I was using another, a couple different types of, of mind math softwares just to see uh, kind of what they, what they could do and uh, uh, the different features. I've used a couple, certain ones feel better to me than others. Uh, I don't like the ones that have grids. Uh, they're extremely awesome, but I, I, I get so tied up in like making it fit the grids properly it, anyway super super weirdly OCD in that way um, 
so this is this is the other one that I was using, which I actually really like. Uh, it's just a little too hard to read uh, certain elements in this one, so I wasn't going to use it for the stream. Uh, but yeah, this is eventually what the other one's going to look like uh, when I when I kind of detail out my thought process. So yeah. Um, so we're going to start from, ugh, no, in the way, we're going to start from, uh, seed number one. Oh, and yeah, um, um, I don't know what's up with my throat today. Uh, not cooperating at all. Uh, all, both of the mind mapping softwares that I've been using are free. Uh, there are paid versions to get other extra features. Um, they're about $5 us a month each. Uh, but yeah, they're totally free and you don't, you don't necessarily need those things. Um, I'm paying for one, but not the other, uh, cause I really wanted to, to test a couple things. So I agreed to subscribe for a couple months. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Depends how much you used to get out of it, if I can justify it or not. Um, but yeah, uh, this one uh, that you see here seems a lot more powerful. It's got a, a bunch more features. It's more designed for business work than it is. Um, not that it is for creative work, but just that it, it, it it's designed with, with a business or a company in mind uh, with its features more than, than a single person, which is fine. Uh, most mind mapping software and brainstorming softwares and all that are, uh, which is why they're so freaking expensive. Uh, a lot of the ones I looked at were almost $400, which is insane. Uh, that's a lot of money to pay for a piece of software. And I would never recommend something like that because I don't want to pay for it just as much as none of you guys want to pay for it. Um, and, and, and there's no real reason to, because there's so many good free options, which might not have as many features, but have certainly good features. Uh, so you don't have to do that. Um, so yeah, uh, we're good. We're going to do this. Um, so <sighs> it's really hard to explain one's thought process when it comes to this kind of thing. Uh, because I know the conclusions I came to, but I don't know why I came to those conclusions all the time. Um, so I'm gonna try and, and walk my way through most of it. Um, but if you do, if you do see something weird, stop me and uh, ask questions, and, and I'll try my best to explain it. <laughs> um, so when I look at seed number one, uh, that was the first seed I generated. Um, we have a billionaire. Uh, we have those goblins, uh, king stables, leather boots, and freeze, put your hands in the air. Um, the obvious connection to me is to put the freeze, put your hands in the air uh, as related to uh, the raiders who are probably the thieves who stole from the billionaire who caused him to lose his fortune. Uh, I'm not going to do that, though, because I think that's a little easy, and, and I'm not, I think there's a better, I think there's better. Um, so, uh, the first kind of couple connections that I'm going to make here, um, are, uh, there, um, sorry, I I'm just... <laughs> I've been thinking about this for like three days, how to explain this, this thought process. And, and I still haven't come to a definite answer, obviously. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, I, think, I think I'm just gonna have to do it. I just gotta jump in and, and just do it and, and it'll all make sense. Uh, So the first, the first connection that I made that I liked, uh, which may be even more typical than the freeze one that I didn't like, uh, but in scene number two, there's a ritual. In scene number three, there's a demon that comes out. 
So, you know, demon summoning ritual. No problem. We're, we're going to go with that. Oh, whoops. That's not what I wanted to. We're going to go with, we're gonna go with a demon summoning ritual here. So I hit my connection button here, make a connection, add a label. Tonight the demon has come out summoned by a ritual under the moonlight, under the moonrise. So that's the first connection I'm going to make. The second connection I'm going to make is I have here a human-like creature with glowing white eyes and a powerful thick neck. Ram-like horns protrude from his head. Tribal bone jewelry decorates its features. Does that not sound demonic possession to you? It's got glowing white eyes and ram's horns. Traditional, traditional elements of a demonic possession. Uh, so I'm going to make that connection. Oh, wrong, wrong one. Stop it. Stop it. No. Oops. Cool. Picked it. Sorry. <laughs> still, I haven't used this software a ton, so I'm still, I'm still kind of getting used to it. Add a label here. The aforementioned demon. So that's the second connection I'm going to make. The other interesting thing I'd like to point out is that while it describes the demon as uh, something with ram-like horns, we also have our fawn, who is half goat and has ram-like horns. So that's a, that's a connection you can make. Um, I haven't decided yet whether or not I want the fawn to be possessed, uh, but that's a decision I will make at some point. Um, that being said, um, as part of this, I am going to make the connection. I need to stop doing that. Make the connection between the fawn and the ritual. Stating that the fawn is, is needed for the ritual. And I'm just going to move a couple things around here so that we can see them better. Boom. Look at that. That might be a little too much. Shrink it back. So these, these are the relationships that we're starting to build to connect these very random f generated from five different generators, three times sort of thing that we have going on. Um, so we have a billionaire who's lost his fortune. He used to own the decaying house, which makes sense. That's why it's decaying, right? I like the use of the word decaying here because it indicates to me that it's not dilapidated per se, but it's actually rotting. Um, and that's an interesting distinction to make story-wise, where it's not necessarily abandoned, but it's actually sick. It's very Lovecraftian, uh, and I'm a huge Lovecraft fan, so I'm cool with that. Uh, and we'll probably use those details later. I hope we'll use those details. If I don't, remind me, because I want to use those details. But I, I, I think I will. Um, so this billionaire used to own the decaying house. And uh, as part of that, and, and how I'm kind of thinking about this, is you can, you don't, not only am I creating relationships across the seeds to, to weave the narrative threads together, but you can also make relationships within the seeds. So I'm going to say that this, um, sorry, not used to, he owns the decaying house, but he doesn't live there because it's decaying. Um, but he used to run the king's stables. Uh, so I'm going to say he used to run the king's stables back when he was rich, before he ate all of his things, misfortune.
Um, and I was thinking about making the killer for hire with the mechanical arm because that would be kind of the thing. He, you know, it's a very uh, winter soldier killer for hire sort of thing. Uh, if any of you have seen Captain America or a read comic like that. But um, I actually think, I actually think in order to be a little cool and, and feel awesome about myself, I'm going to make the siren have a mechanical arm. I don't know why she has a mechanical arm, but she does. And I'm going to say that the leather boots are the killer for hires. Because again, why not? here cool and I also am gonna say that this freeze because I didn't want it to be about sort of the thieves I'm gonna say the freeze is for the killer for hire I don't know why it was said to him yet I don't know what he's running from or like who he's trying to escape from but someone said it to him for some reason and for whatever reason, that narrative thread was in um, the first narrative thread and not in his own narrative thread. So the thing that I'm kind of building here with these relationships is by saying that, that someone said that in this thread uh, to a character in another thread, that he's going to make an appearance in the thread that's not his. Uh, he's gonna, it's not going to be his perspective per se, um, but it's gonna, he's going to make an appearance in, in some way. Even if it's in a story where someone talks about how they, they asked him to freeze. Right? So, the next part. Uh, the sleeping fawn is going to be asleep at the winter waterfall. Because I just kind of like that image of the fawn sleeping at the waterfall. A little, a little typical, maybe, but but I like the image. So I'm going to write that down. Um, and I'm going to do something real quick here. In order to make this a little bit clearer, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to color code um, the threads really... I'm going to color code the threads really quick. So each arrow... Uh, so seed one is all, all the arrows coming out from seed one are going to be one color and all the arrows coming out from seed two are going to be another one and seed three is going to be a third color. Um, so I'm going to do that really quick uh, just because it'll, it'll make it a little easier to read. Uh, and this, this software makes it pretty easy for me because I, I can see the circles where they connect so I can just click on those and do it. Um, it just takes a quick sec here. Just so now we have some more visual clarity about what we're trying to do. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say that the siren, uh, that the feather is going to be the sirens. I don't know why this feather is important yet. I think it's going to be important to the ritual or perhaps stopping the ritual, but I'm not really sure yet. So change that color. I'm going to add a label. Uh, belongs to beautiful feather. Oh, that's not what I want to do. I'll pop this up a little bit. Oh. Doing weird computer computery things. Cool. <laughs> so so this these are these are the thoughts that are kind of swirling around my head when I, when I when I look at them. Uh, the the next thing I kind of see, uh, and this is a decision I made, is uh, instead of it being a killer for hire to kill the demon. I actually think it's going to be a killer for hire to kill the siren so that the siren can't stop the demon. So I'm 
write that down. I'm thinking at this point that the Siren is the main character, but I haven't quite decided how I'm going to play that out yet. Uh, I will hopefully make that decision by the end of today, uh, but we'll see because I'm actually running a lot longer than I thought I would. <laughs> um, but I don't know. This is this is this is why this is why it's it's a learning process, right? <laughs> um. So yeah. So I got connections everywhere. Uh, pretty much everything from C three has connection going in or out. Everything from C two has a connection going in or out. C one, I still have one thing that hasn't have anything done with it, and that's the Goblin Raiders. And I haven't figured out what I want to do with the Goblin Raiders yet. I know they're going to make an appearance. I don't really think of them as, A, the thieves. Because um, it's a little too easy, and then they become really throwaway, and I don't think I like that. I don't think they're going to be the people who contracted the killer for hire, because it doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, from, from, like, a, a fancy race perspective sort of thing. Like, why? I... I don't think they're the, the demon worshippers, because again, it's a little too atypical that the do goblins be the, or a little too typical that the goblins be the bad guys, and I don't really think they should be the bad guys, I kind of want them to be secondary characters, but I haven't really figured out uh, where they, they fit yet, uh, but they will be characters, for sure, for sure. I guarantee they'll be in there, they won't be no like a throwaway, and they won't be bad guys. That's, that's what I'm thinking at this point. Um, so yeah. Um, and, and this is definitely a fantasy story. Uh, I don't think... I think there's too many weirdly fantasy elements uh, for it not to be a fantasy story. Uh, I could try making it something more modern. I don't think it would really fit... Um, especially with things like stables and, and stuff like that. Like, there's too much imagery from, from a medieval style, uh, to really get away from it. Um, though now that I'm thinking about it, it might be really neat to do a fantasy story, uh, like a tr almost traditional fantasy, but instead of, instead of it being in medieval, the, like, medieval age, if we did it in, like, the classical era... Uh, that might be a really neat idea to play with. And especially with, when I have, like, kind of sirens and, and fawns and, and those sort of, like, Greek and Roman-inspired, uh, or the, those Greek and Roman, uh, icons. Um, that's, that's certainly something I, I could play with. Um, let me think on that, uh, a little bit. Go, go write it down. Go write it down. Uh, classical era fantasy. Because I'm curious. As, as to what elements would differ. Uh, like, obviously, technology level would be a bit different. Uh, philosophy level, clothing's different. Um, but yeah, worth, worth exploring. Worth exploring. So... These are these are all the thoughts I have at the moment. I don't think I'm missing anything. I'm gonna check my thing real quick. See if there's anything here that I may or may not have missed. Just just zoom in real quick. No, I got all that. I got all that. I think I got that. Got that. Oops. Yeah. Okay. I think I think I got it all. I think I got it all. Oh, I I got I got I got an idea. What if oh, I did this thing again? Oh, oops. There we go. We're good. We're good. I don't want that. Delete this. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that the Goblin Raiders want the feather. I'm not sure why they want the feather, but they want the feather. Cool. All right. Yeah. Got it. 
think I think we're good. I think we're good. I don't know if there's anything else that really needs to be indicated here. I will indicate that one last relationship that um, decide if he gets possessed. Boom. This from my own notes. Something to think about. Let's change that color real quick. Cool. All right, so there. I indicated all the relationships. So, so this is this is the process of brainstorming, where I've kind of sat down with my idea, and I've played around with different concepts, and, and you've you've heard me say, you know, like, well, I thought this, but I didn't like it for this reason, or I thought this. But I, uh, I felt it was too done or I couldn't do it justice or whatever. And, and, and I've thrown around some, some, some different things. And this is one of the cool parts of what, what a mind map allows you to do is I, I've drawn all these, all these connections um, bet and, and relationships between things. Um, and, and you can do a lot with mind maps. Um, a lot of them allow you, a lot of the softwares allow you to import images and, and you can draw things and you can use different kinds of shapes to indicate different types of information. And uh, these actually, you can make lots of different levels. Like uh, if I click here, like I can, I can go like multi-levels deep and create their levels within that. Like those are all things you can do within, with, with a mind map. Um, so they're super useful, and, and I've done them for certain types of stories uh, that I've worked on recently, or if I had like kind of a, a just a concept that I, I wanted to think more about. Uh, this, this is one of the, the, the techniques that you can use to do that. Um, so yeah. So really, um, the next step, which I actually will do today, uh, after the break, I'm going to take another break in, in a couple of minutes. Uh, I think we're going to run the actual three hour block this time instead of just like two and a half, like the last, the last couple weeks, uh, which is fine. Cause I planned for that. Um, but yeah, uh, so after the break, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do log lines. Uh, I don't know if we're going to write the complete synopsis today, but we're going to do at least a log line to kind of have an idea to think about over, over the, the next two weeks. Uh, so that we have, we have, our subconscious can process, uh, different, different iterations and, and facets of the idea when we, when we get to the outlining stage. Uh, so yeah. Um, I'm going to take an, another couple minute break, uh, about five minutes, come back around nine o'clock, uh, my time, <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, so I'll, I'll see you then. Oh, um, and, and just before I go, uh, I will be attaching, uh, the mind map and all that. I believe there's a way I can embed it, uh, as a link and stuff so that, um, I'll, I'll attach it directly to the, uh, to the, to the, uh, to the, my web page. Uh, so you can click on it and zoom in at different elements. Um, but yeah, cool. Break time.